All right, so we've talked about two concurrent or two points or uh, two words, okay, that three points were concurrent to. Remember the first one? What was the first one we did? Circumcenter. <laughs> circumcenter. How did we find the circumcenter? That's it. Perpendicular bisectors, okay? So Denise is the only one paying attention. So <laughs> So perpendicular bisectors. Then we did a second one on section 5.1. What was the second one we did? What was it? Orthocenter, correct. And how did we find the orthocenter? What did we do to that triangle to find the orthocenter? That is the altitude, correct. It's called the altitude. That's what you're looking for. Yep. All right. So those were two of them. We're going to do four all together, right? So here's the next two, and hopefully we'll be able to get to both of them today. Uh, it's Wednesday. I always forget what time. What are you doing over there? 28. Okay, it's about half an hour. So I should be able to finish this. I mean, it's only, not, is it two? Yeah, it's two lessons. So hopefully we can finish this. So let's go to uh, GeoGebra. And let's explain what we're going to do. So what was the first word? In center. So we started talking about this yesterday. I kind of led you up to this point. Um, and this is what this is kind of where we ended up yesterday. All right. So we've got a triangle. Look in your notes. What was the last thing we did yesterday? We found the what of an angle. The angle bisector. That's correct. So what we're going to do is we're going to bisect all three of these angles. Okay, what does that mean if I bisect the angle? Okay, they will intersect, but that, that's not what bisects the angles. Divide them in what? In two, into half, right, okay? Divide them in half or divide them by two. And we have a little thing right here that does that, uh, right there. See, it says angle bisector, all right? So I click on that and watch, I click this side, click this side, and it makes an angle bisector. Now it puts those two lines. I'm gonna get rid of a lot of the junk to clean it up a little bit. But do you see what that line right here does? It splits this angle into two equal angles, okay? I showed you yesterday, right? We, we showed you that the both angles were equal. I'm not gonna do that today, but just understand that it did bisect it. So this angle right here is equal to this angle right here. So we're gonna do the same thing with the other three, or the other two angles, okay? So we're gonna bisect all three angles. Everybody got it? All right, and what do you think they're gonna do? They're gonna do what? They're all going to intersect. Now, two lines, it's easy to get two lines to intersect, right? Two lines will always intersect unless they're what? Parallel. Parallel to each other, okay? But to get three lines that intersect in the same point, it's a little trickier. But that's what happens here. Watch. So if I click on this and click on this, see those lines that go inside the triangle? Those are your bisectors, okay? Now, they put these lines on the outside. I think it's kind of a waste. There must be some reason why they do that. I'm just not really sure why but let's get rid of them. Let's get rid of that one. I think that one and this one right there. Okay, so there's our angle bisectors. Now what I'm gonna do, oops. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call that point something. That point where they intersect, okay? They're concurrent, right? They're concurrent at that point, which means they all intersect at that one point. What's the name of this thing that we're gonna do today? In center, that's correct, right? That was the title of the lesson, or one of them, right? And that's the first one we're going to do. So I'm going to call it the in center. All right, there you go. There's the in center. All right, let's go through this again. How did we find the in center? We bisected all three angles, exactly right. Everybody hear me on that? What does that mean when you bisect an angle? You split it into two or split it in half, right? Okay? Everybody with me on that? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of those lines and I'm gonna tell you something. And we kind of alluded to it yesterday. Let's get rid of this one, this one, and this one. Okay, there's my in center, all right? And I could move this thing around, couldn't I? Now, this is kind of interesting. Remember on the, uh, on the two that we did before? Remember when I made a obtuse triangle? Where did like the circumcenter and orthocenter lie when I made an obtuse triangle? It was outside the circle, but check this one out. Okay, this is an in-center. Again, one more time, just so you remember. How did we find the in-center? 
we bisected the angles, okay? That's how we found it. It's not just some random point in there, is it? Okay, it's a specific point to when I bisect. Check it out. I could make this into an acute triangle. The in-center is still where? Inside, right? In-center, inside the triangle, correct? Look, I can make this an obtuse triangle. And the, where is the in-center? It's still inside the triangle, isn't it? I can make this a right angle. Where is the in-center? Inside the triangle. Okay, so the in-center is always going to be where? Inside the triangle, yes. Well, how did we find the orthocenter? We found the altitude. We went from a vertex perpendicular to the other side. On this one, how did we find the in-center? No, we found the angle bisector. Okay, we bisected the angle. So we did two different things for orthocenter and in-center. Right, so in-center, we bisected the angle, and that gives us this in-center right here. Everybody good with that? All right. The hardest part about this is just remembering which one is what, okay? Like the circumcenter. How'd you find the circumcenter? Perpendicular bisectors, right? How'd you find the orthocenter? The altitude. How'd you find the in-center? You bisected the angles. But then we got a fourth one we're going to do in a minute, okay? So that's the hardest part. It's the hardest part for me, all right? Because I sometimes forget which one, you know, how do you find which one? What word goes with what, all right? And I've been teaching this quite a while. So you got to go over it. You got to think about it. There's a little chart. I forget what page it's on. Somebody you got your book open? 216. There's a chart and it's got circumcenter. It's got orthocenter. It's got in center. And what's the third? What's the fourth one? Centroid. It's got that on there. And it tells you in that one chart how to find each of them. And it tells you the significance about that point, right? Like that, um, the circumcenter. When we did the circumcenter, you found it by the perpendicular bisectors. But what did we know about the circumcenter? What was unique about it? It was equidistant to the vertices, right? Remember that? Okay. All that stuff you got to know. And on page 216, Samara, is that right? 216? Yep, it's on there. All right. So let's go back to this. Now, there is something unique about the end center. Remember the ortho center? There was nothing special about it. Remember we said feel bad for it because there's just nothing special about you, ortho center. The in center, there absolutely is something special. So what, watch what I'm going to do. I am going to go from the in center and I am going to draw a perpendicular line from the in center to the side or to each side of the triangle. Hear what I just said? I'm going to draw a what? A perpendicular from the in center to each side of the triangle. So let's do that. Let's go perpendicular line. I'm going to click here. I can click anywhere on here. It's going to draw a perpendicular. Everybody see that? Does that look perpendicular? Sure. It looks like it's 90 degrees. I could show you that it's 90 degrees. We've seen that already. We're not going to waste our time on that. So let's do the same thing um, with this one. Let's go from the in center to this side right here. There's a perpendicular. Everybody with me? All right. Let's go from the in center to this side. There's a perpendicular. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a point where it hits, where that perpendicular line hits, right there. See that E or D, E, and F? Okay. Now, just to clean it up a little bit, let's get rid of those long lines. Those long lines keep on going forever. So I'm just going to clean it up. Let's scooch down here. Let's get rid of that one. Let's get rid of this one. And let's get rid of this one. Now, I don't know if you remember or not, but way back in the early days of our geometry class, we had a definition about what it meant to be the distance from a point to a line. So if I had a point, oh, you know what? Oh no. All that stuff that I was just doing did not show up on the YouTubes because I forgot to click on this. It was just showing that blank thing right there as I did all that talking. There we go. That's what I've been doing if anybody's watching this on YouTube. Oh my goodness. But you're all here anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, so what was I going to say? Yeah, I did want to go back to this because I was going to write something. Do you remember if I had a point way out here like this and I said, what is the distance from this point to this line? Is it from here to, oops, 
is it from here to here? Is that the distance? If I was to measure the distance, right? If I said there's a point right there and there's a line over there and I want you to find the distance between this point and this line, where would you measure it to? Yeah, let's not use straight down. Okay, it would be an altitude, right? But it's perpendicular, isn't it? That would be the distance. Everybody see that? So this would be the distance from what? From a point to a what? To a line or a line segment. Do you remember that from way back? All right, so now let's do this. Let's put GeoGebra on. Oops, we gotta do that, do this. There we go, all right. Now, what I wanna do is, what is the distance from the in center to this side right here? It's the perpendicular distance, isn't it? Okay, does that make any sense? I already did the perpendicular line thing, so I know where the, so I know that's perpendicular. Then check this out. What is the distance from the in center to this side right here? Well, it's the perpendicular distance. See how that's a right angle? See how that's a right angle right there? And then we're gonna go from here to here. All right, whoops. So that, I mean, that's nice. Okay, watch, I can move this around. Okay, all that, but look at the three little line segments that I just drew. They are perpendicular to the sides, correct? That doesn't change, doesn't matter how I do the triangle, every one of those line segments is always perpendicular to that side. But what else do you think might be true about those three segments? What does it look like? They're equal to each other, exactly right, okay? And I can show you, let's do it on this one, I can show you that they actually are. I hit the distance thing, so that's, right now that's three, that's three, what do you think this one is? Three, there you go. I could change the size of the triangle, right? And look, all three of those segments still stay the same, don't they? See it? Make it smaller. I could take this side, bring it out here. I could take this side, bring it out here. I can do whatever I want to it, but what's, it al what's always gonna happen? The in center is what? Let's use a good geometry word. Somebody said it, Gabby, I think you said it yesterday. There's a good geometry word that we used. It's equidistant, that's correct. Okay, the in center is equidistant from what though? Not from the vertices, it's equidistant to the, no, it's equidistant to what? This is the same distance from the in center to where? To the, this isn't a line, this is a line segment, but it's more than that. It's part of a triangle, so it's a what? What? It's the side of the triangle, the side, okay? So, I thought you would get that pretty quick. That's okay. So watch, so what's unique? What's special? Let's say that, let's use that word. What's special about the end center? It's equidistant to the sides of the triangle. You with me? So that in center is in a special place. It's in a special place that's, in the, that's the same distance from here to this side. It's the same distance from here to this side and the same distance from here to this side. Does that make sense? All right, so that's what's special about the in center. Again, one more time. How did we find the in center? What did we do to get the in center? We bisected the angles, okay? So we bisected all three angles that gives us where the in center is. What's special about that point? What's special about that location? That location on that triangle is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. You got that? Okay. It's really not that hard to understand. Again, like I said earlier, it's the hardest part is just keeping them all straight, all right? Keeping all four of them straight. That's the hardest part of it. We okay with that or not? Yeah, that's not too bad. And so what do you think they're gonna do? I mean, they'll probably give you like, here, let's see if I can get rid of, if I click on that, no. I tried this yesterday, didn't I? I tried to get rid of that length. I don't know how to do that. Is it that? No, it gets rid of the whole thing. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's pretend I told you this was the end center and I told you that we'll call this I, so IF is 2.8. And then I said that this was X and this was Y. What would you put? 2.8 for X and 2.8 for Y. Pretty easy, agreed? 
So the math on most of these is pretty simple. But we're going to do one right now that the math is just, it's not complicated. I hate to even use that word. It's a, just a little bit more involved than what we've done before. Because really what we've done before with the circumcenter, it was equidistant from the vertices, right? So if I know one of them, I know the other two because they're the same. Agreed? All right, same thing with this. If I know one of these distances right here, the other two are the same. Really, that's not that difficult. The next one's a little bit trickier. So this is the last one that we're going to do. Everybody awake? Paying attention? All right. Xavier, you awake? Look like you're nodding off on me here. So now what we're going to do is this. We're going to find something that, again, it's another word that we've talked about, and it's the word median. Do you remember the word median? Like in your everyday life, where would you see a median? The middle of the road. Exactly right. Okay, so it means the what? The middle. All right, not every median is in the middle, but yeah, that's kind of how we think of it, right? So when I think of median, I think of middle. So what we're going to do is we are going to go from a vertex, okay, we're going to start at any of the these vertices. Start at a vertex and we're going to go to the middle of what? Look where this little hand's going. From the vertex to the middle of the, the opposite side, right, to the opposite side. So what do we have to find on the opposite side then? The midpoint, exactly right. If I'm going to go to the middle, right, if I'm going to, median means middle, right, and so if I'm going to go to the middle, I've got to find out where the midpoint is. Now, I don't have to guess on this program. That's why I like to use this program. So I could um, find the midpoint right there. There's midpoint. I just click on this side, and bam, there's my midpoint. They call it point D. Then I can click on this side. There's the midpoint of that side. Click on this. There's the midpoint of that side. That's pretty simple, right? Yeah, so all I did was just found the midpoint. Now, what is the median? The median goes from where? It's, it's, yeah, we don't say corner though, what do we say? The vertex. the vertex, right. We go from the vertex to where? We're gonna draw a line from the vertex to the, to the midpoint of the opposite side, okay? That's gonna be our median. So let's, I'm gonna go to segment. I'm just gonna draw from A to D. That's a median. Again, do you understand why it's a median? Why? Because it goes from a vertex to where? Not just the opposite side, to the midpoint of the opposite side. Look, I could have gone to here and that's the opposite side, but it's not the median. Okay, it has to go to the what? Midpoint. Got it? Let's do it for the other two. So I did A, let's do B. I go from B to what? To F. Okay? Now, they intersect. Again, it's easy for two lines to intersect. It's really kind of special when all three of them intersect. Let's see if it does. What do you think? Yeah, of course. Okay, if they've been doing it so far, they're going to do it on this one too. So I'm going to go from here to E and check it out. They intersect right there. Take a wild guess. It shouldn't be too wild because it should be in your notes. Take a wild guess what that point G is. That's the centroid, the centroid, okay? So let me um, type that in. All right, so there's the centroid. Let's review again, all right? We're gonna repeat ourselves a lot because that helps you learn it a little bit, okay? How did we find the centroid? What did we do? We drew a what? The median of all three sides, okay? That means we went from a vertex to the what? To the midpoint of the opposite side, okay? So if I do that to all three sides, then I've got that thing called the centroid. Now that centroid is pretty important. I'm gonna, let's do this. What is it, 28? Okay, I should be able to do this. So let's get rid of this. I'm gonna keep the centroid there. I'm gonna, oops, can't do that. Why can I not, I don't understand. Maybe if I put another point there. I did this earlier and it worked. I don't know why. Let's do this. Okay, it's still got rid of this. I don't want to get rid of that point, though. 
Girls, shh, come on. I'm trying to concentrate. You guys make it very difficult. I'll tell you what. Well, you saw how we got the centroid. Okay, so that was good. Oh, let, let's do this before I go to the other program. Look at the centroid. What if I make this an obtuse triangle? Where is the centroid? It's still inside the triangle, isn't it? Okay, so the first two, when I made uh, the circumcenter and the uh, orthocenter, when I made an obtuse triangle, where was that point? Where was the circumcenter and orthocenter? It was outside, right? When I did a when I did a acute triangle, it was inside. When I did a right triangle, it was right on it, correct? But on these two today, what are the ones we did today? In center and centroid. Okay, this in center and centroid is always where? It's inside. It doesn't matter. See it? Doesn't matter. Unless I just draw a straight line across and it's right on it, but then it's not a triangle, is it? Okay, as soon as I make it a triangle, look what happens. It's inside. There's no way I can make this triangle so that centroid is outside the triangle. All right, so that's kind of interesting. Let's go back. Oops. What am I doing? Let's try this again. All right, let's go back to Illustrator so I can draw some stuff. So let's do this. Let's draw a triangle and um, there we go. So let's draw doesn't matter how we draw it. What I'm going to do is I am going to go, let's do this in a different color now. Oops, there we go, come on, there we go. Um, I'm going to put a little point right here. Actually, where'd it go? There it goes. Excuse me. Um, let's put, so what am I doing here? What am I doing right now? Anybody paying attention? Yeah, I'm putting a midpoint on each of these sides. Why am I doing that? See that little blue dot right there? I don't know if you can see it or not. It's, it's kind of light. Okay, so now watch this. This isn't quite as cool as the other program, but it still works. So I've got that. What am, what am I drawing here? Give me the word. Um, no. Medians? Drawing medians. Right. Okay. So I'm drawing medians, but where do they intersect? They intersect at the centroid. Good. So that big yellow point right there, that's the centroid. Now, this is what's unique about the centroid. So this has a little bit more math than what we've done before, okay? I don't know, does anybody have the, um, like the theorem in front of them? It doesn't say two thirds. I don't have an exit. So the centroid, what's it say? Two thirds of the way from the vertex to the midpoint or something like that? Okay to the opposite side, right, to the midpoint of the opposite side, yep. Okay, so everybody watch right, right here. So this point right here, that centroid, that's our centroid, okay? Listen to what the thing says, and I, I'm gonna show you how to think about it just a little bit easier than what they say, because they, they always use the two thirds. So this point is two thirds of the way from this vertex to this point, this midpoint on the opposite side. Two thirds of the way, which means, what is it, I'll just put some letters in here. What is it from A to B then? What's from A to, I should say, let me say it like this. Compare AB to BC. If B is two thirds of the whole thing, then compare AB and BC. Look, B is two thirds. So what is BC? It's one third, that's right, okay? So B is two thirds from here to here. So this part right here is what? Two thirds, so what's this? This is one third, which means how much bigger is AB compared to BC? It's double, it's exactly double. You with me on that? Okay, so it took a little help from me, but that's okay, we got there. 
So I'm going to get rid of that and get rid of this because I'm going to put another number in there. So, for instance, here's the kind of stuff that you can see on a quiz or a test or your homework. All right, it might get, well, it will get a little more complicated than this, but this is the basics. What if I said that this BC was four? And I told you B was the centroid. You should tell me, you should be able to tell me what AB is equal to. What is it? It's eight, that's right, because this is double this. What if I asked you to find AC? It's 12, easy as that. What? Eight plus four. Eight plus four is 12. From here to here is eight, from here to here is four, so the whole thing is 12. Okay, yeah. If you flip it, what do you mean? If, if you knew this? Yeah, it doesn't make any difference what side it's on. No, it's just it's the longer one. And I like that you said that because that's how I refer to it. I refer AB as the longer segment and BC as the what? The shorter segment, okay? So the longer segment is twice as big as what? The shorter segment, okay? Well, they'll give you something, okay? What if they told you this? What if they said, what if they told you the whole thing was 18? How'd you get 12 and 6? Double what? Double 18? Okay, it's double BC. So what, do you, what would you find first? I would find BC first. Exactly. Since this is one-third, remember this is one-third, this is two-thirds, right? Since this is one-third, now you could do the two-thirds, but I like to do the one-third. I think it's easier. Multiplying by a third is the same thing as dividing by three, okay? 18 divided by three is what? Six. So if they tell you the whole thing is 18, then the shorter part is going to be six because that's the one-third. Agreed? Now you could find AB two different ways. You could go 18 minus six, which is what? 12, or you could say that this is twice this. We got it? All right, so if this is six, this has gotta be twice as much. Do they add up to 18? Yes, they do. Is this twice as big as that? Yeah. Is this half as big as this? Yeah, all right? And that's, that's really the hardest part of doing this is when they give you the whole thing, all right? So if they give you the whole entire thing, find the shorter one first. How do you find the shorter one? Just divide by three, okay? So once you divide by three, you get this. And then to find this one, you can find it either way. You can just double this, or you could go 18 minus this. Same number, isn't it? Okay? So that's the kind of stuff that they're gonna do. But you know how geometry goes. They're not always just gonna give you regular numbers. They could say that this is what? like 3x, right? What if this was 3x? What is it from this one right here? Yeah, why? How'd you get 6x? It's just double it, right? Everybody got it? Okay. Well, the shorter one is 3x. The longer one is twice as big as the shorter one. Yeah, yeah, I said... I gave you the 3x, okay, so I give you that, then what's this going to be? 6x. What's the whole thing going to be from here all the way to here? It's 9x, right. But they might give you like a number, right? They might say it's equal to 57 or something like that, right? And you got to solve for x and then find the length of each part, right? You know they're going to do that, right? Because they've always done it, right? They always start off with just regular numbers and then they throw in the x's and stuff and do the algebra. We good? All right. Okay. Um, yeah, you want you just want to turn it in? Did you have any questions on that homework or what are we doing tomorrow? Yeah, it just says go over questions. So, do you want me to take the five one now? What is it? Five one B? Yeah. Yeah. Let's just take it now, and then uh, we'll. Take a look at when you collect them for me. Ian will collect them for for us.